Field of Armor, 6 scale, World War II Tiger I RC tank. This is the Visuino sketch details with the 6 channel RC and motor sounds. There's a lot going on in the sketch and it's basically broken down into 8 separate sections. The first part we're going to look at is the sound. So the two inputs coming in are throttle and steering. The throttle directly runs the clock generator. It's remapped to a 30 to 70 range, I believe. And that tells it how fast to actually play the sound uh, when you move the throttle stick up and down. Um, both channels are added after being mapped and sent to a random analog generator. Now what this random analog generator does is it gives the sound a little bit of variance in the frequency like when a motor is idling it doesn't idle at the same sound every cylinder this gives it a little bit of uh, difference in the sound I guess you can hear it's got sound now so what it's basically doing is I set up the two channels left right up down control frequency tone and so you go forward and it goes faster and then left and right gives you different tones also so yeah I know the sound kind of sucks right now but it will get better now next up we're gonna look at the steering blending for the two track drives. So throttle and uh, direction are fed into the steering differential block and it goes out to the two servos. Now these two servos represent uh, dual 60 amp speed controllers for the drive motors. Alright now we're going to get into the MUX or multiplex uh, IC chip and the controls that run it. So the counter goes from 0 to 5. As it counts from 0 to 5, it activates the three OR blocks, which are representations of the binary digits, the first three, 1, 2, and 4. So this is what the little wiring block looks like on the MUX chip. Yeah, never mind the damn fuzzy picture, I know it is, blah, 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 blah. This is the thing that's got that great big blue light in the videos. Alright, so to explain how this works, the common there is the connection that is going to pin 2 on the Arduino, the one with the hardware clock on it, the hardware trigger. Um, now you can see the C, B, and A up there. Uh, this is what's known as a BCD, a binary coded decimal block. So as they are engaged or disabled, it will switch the feed between the different channels. Now as you'll see, this chip is capable of eight channels, but I'm only using the first six. By changing the MUX chip channel every 33 milliseconds, it allows the 20 millisecond pulse coming from the radio to be read twice and then averaged out. Alright, now the fourth section we're going to look at is actually where the radio is being read from channel 2 and then split up into the different six signals. I like the cool lasers. They're real freaky. <laughs> Alright, so now the RC servo meter uh, goes through the dead zone mapping to give it a little bit of center point. Uh, it limits it and then it averages it to catch at least two of the signals for each channel. And then it uses the counter for the uh, MUX chip to actually send it out to the correct channel 1 through channel 6 signal line. The next section we're going to look at is the slew angle of the turret. Now the turret's controlled by a stepper motor and those controls are down in the lower left hand corner of the sketch. The 
first thing I'll mention is the analog toggle switch. That is channel 5 coming off of the switch on the remote control to enable the turret. Alright, so channel 3 feeds into the speed direction component. And then that splits off into the frequency. Now, the 0 to 1 coming from the analog uh, is from a 0 to 700 frequency on the stepper motor and then direction from the speed direction is just reversing it if needed. Now I did need to switch pins 1 and 2 on this stepper to get it to work correctly. <laughs> Next up, the elevation on the turret. <laughs> now this one is down on the lower right side and it also has a safety from channel 5 down at the end of the line. Alright, the feedback from the potentiometer is uh, scaled. Uh, the minimum and maximum is 0.4 to 0.6. The sketch will not go any lower or higher than the number you set in this remap here. And then it's limited 0 to 1, so it will not go over or under. Now using this feedback from the potentiometer, just like a servo does, it's going to take the stick value from the RC transmitter and find the difference of where the potentiometer is actually sitting. Uh, it's going to add 0.5 to that because it's going to, if there's no difference, it'll be 0, which is actually 0.5 on our 0 to 1 scale. Uh, and then it limits that from 0 to 1 so it does not lock the system up. Now the next part is actually kind of extensive. Uh, is the debug portion. It takes input from the serial uh, port and it has three different reports so far that you can uh, access and depending on which number you put in it gives you a different report like the first one if you put in number one it gives you a readout of all six channels in one line and it gives you that readout completely if you put in number two it gives you a data readout for the elevation controls if you push in number three it gives you the data readout for the turret slew left and right controls so this is pretty much for debugging and getting the balance of the numbers correct so the first section is where it's taking whatever you enter in the serial monitor and comparing it in those four compare text blocks those are set to zero one two and three if it matches the zero one two or three it will then set the integer value for the clock um, demux. So if you selected one, two, or three, you're going to get one of the uh, uh, outputs on the far right there, uh, either the RC channels, the elevation, or the sloop. So if you want to continue to follow the project, uh, make sure you, let me get this damn right, like, share, comment, subscribe, or don't. It's all good. Peace.